Hey there, I'm David. I turned 42 this year. I married eight years ago, and a year later, we had a child living together as a family of three. I work as a doctor, originally at a university hospital, but I admired my father's dedication as a local practitioner. Half a year ago, when my father fell sick and considered closing his clinic due to his hospitalization, I decided to resign from the university hospital and take over my father's clinic. He was happy about it. This led us to move from an apartment to my childhood home next to the clinic. The building is old. When I mentioned to my dad that we should consider remodeling it eventually, he told me to go ahead as we pleased. Even after the transition to my generation, the local community continues to rely on us, and I find my work fulfilling every day. Our child is a boy named Jake, and the one who chose his name. I want him to grow up to be a well-rounded and reliable person. Though he's just in first grade now, he already expresses a desire to become a doctor and is learning German. Jake has far exceeded my expectations, becoming a very dependable son, though he acts more mature than his age, to the point of concern, seeing him covered in mud while playing in the park is a comforting reminder that he's still very much a child. My wife, Sarah, is beautiful but capricious. Lately, it's been troubling that she's not very willing to help with household chores or parenting. In the beginning of our marriage, we shared household duties and both engaged in parenting, but for the past six months she has hardly been involved at all. Sometimes she'll take Jake to the convenience store, but it's always me who takes him to parks and other play areas. I don't mind that, but since we've had fewer family things recently, I suggested we all go out today. Hey, we haven't been out together much recently. How about we go out next weekend, I proposed. You haven't been spending much time with Jake, have you? It can't be helped because I'm busy, Sarah replied. Jake wants to go to the movies. How about we go together on the weekend after that? We can have dinner at a restaurant, I suggested. Sarah checked her phone briefly before replying. Well, I guess that's fine. I don't have any plans. Great, Jake will be so happy. Thank you, I said. I'm going to take a bath and head to bed. Okay, got it, Sarah said as she left the living room with her phone. Hum, I really want to talk more with Sarah. I want to go out and do things together like we used to, I thought to myself. We used to talk about the future and go out together, but today was good. I'm honestly surprised because she usually declines my invitations. But I was so happy she agreed that I immediately told Jake, who was in his room. On the weekend, Jake... Are you ready? I asked. Yes, all set. I'm ready any time, Jake replied. Great, we're just waiting on Sarah. Jake, where's Mom? I inquired. I don't know, Jake responded. Ever since Jake started elementary school, he wanted his own room, so we've all been sleeping separately. I knocked on Sarah's room door, but got no response. I knocked again and slowly opened the door. Sarah, are you here? I called out. When I opened the door, Sarah wasn't there. Maybe she's in the bathroom, I thought. Just then, my phone rang and it was Sarah. Sarah, what's up with the call? I asked. Sorry, but I can't make it today. Something came up at work, Sarah explained. What? You didn't mention that yesterday, I said. That's because it came up suddenly just go to the movies, the two of you. It's not a problem even if I'm not there right. Bye, she said hurriedly before hanging up. Seriously, I thought to myself, I thought we could all go together. Dad, what's wrong? Where's Mom? Jake asked, sensing something was off. Mom has to work, so it'll just be the two of us, I replied. Okay, I understand, Jake said, a bit disappointed. But then he smiled, and I felt sorry that he was looking forward to it. Just the two of us? All right, Jake. Let's make the best of it, I said. All right, Dad. Let's go, Jake agreed. After the movie, I suggested. How about we eat your favorite hamburgers on the way back? Yes, Jake explained. 
We packed our bags and drove to the station where the cinema is located. Several hours later, we returned home. Did you have fun, Jake? I asked. Yes, it was fun. Thanks for today, Dad, Jake replied. Sure. Let's go again sometime, I said. When Jake and I returned home in the evening, Sarah was already back. We're home. How was your day? I asked. We ended up going to the park and other places in the afternoon, so sorry we're late, Sarah responded indifferently. Jake then quietly approached her and said, Here, this is a gift for you, Mom. Saying so, he took something out of his backpack. What is this? Sarah asked. Today, there was a keychain-making workshop, and I made one for everyone. This one's for you, Jake explained, handing her a white star-shaped keychain. It turned out well, didn't it? I remarked. It was then that Jake said with a happy face, Well, I don't think I'll wear it, but I'll keep it for now. I'm tired, so I'll be in my room, before leaving the living room. I couldn't stand her manner of speaking and followed her. Sarah, wait, I said softly, making sure Jake couldn't hear. Jake made it with so much effort. You shouldn't speak like that. I didn't say I didn't want it, did I? Sarah retorted as she locked herself in her room. Sarah seems to dislike the fact that I decided to move here. I beg her to come, and now we're here. I understand that I'm asking for her patience, and I want to discuss it, but this is the situation we're in. Even if she doesn't like it, she didn't have to say that about something Jake worked hard to make. With mixed feelings, I returned to the living room, where Jake was. Maybe I should have chosen something different for Mom, I thought to myself, feeling a bit defeated. Jake seemed a bit down. Jake, Mom is just tired from work. I will put it on my work bag. What about you? I asked. I think I'll put it on my backpack, Jake replied with a smile. Sarah's attitude must make him feel lonely. It wasn't like this before. It feels like she's become more distant since we moved here. This can't go on. I need to have a proper talk for Jake's sake. A few days later, when I finished work and returned home at night, Jake was waiting while watching TV. Sorry I'm late, Jake. I got caught up talking with a patient. I'll make dinner right away, I said. Dad, how was your day? Jake asked. It's okay. Oh, I folded the laundry for you, I replied. Wow, thanks, Jake, I said, feeling touched by his gesture. Jake often takes the initiative to do things like laundry and vacuuming. I only let him cook when I'm with him, as it's still dangerous for him to do it alone. Jake is really becoming responsible. Dad, oh, sorry. I'll get ready now. Now, I can help you too. After putting down my things, Jake and I started preparing dinner together. What do you want to do tomorrow, Jake? I have the afternoon off, so we can do anything you like. All right, I'll think about it. Good. Tomorrow is Jake's birthday. Sarah should definitely know. I emphasized it again yesterday, telling her to buy the gift for Jake. So, it should be fine. Of course, I've prepared something too, but I'm worried if you'll like it. The next morning, Sarah must have come home late last night again. I can hear some noise from her room, so she must be there. I knocked twice. When she responded in a low voice, I opened the door to find her still in her pyjamas holding her cell phone. What? I'll be working until noon, so please take care of Jake. And did you get him a birthday gift? Also, don't forget, we're going out in the afternoon. I know. Okay. You don't have to tell me multiple times. Close the door when you're done. Sarah responded irritably, then went back to looking at her phone. So, I gently closed the door as she asked. Is everything really going to be okay? I left feeling a mix of anxiety and hope, leaning more towards hope. When I went to the living room, Jake was already there. Happy seventh birthday, Jake. Here's your birthday present, Dad. Thank you. Can I open it? Go ahead. Jake excitedly opened the bag. Wow, yes, amazing. 
The present I gave Jake was a stethoscope. I used to use this stethoscope was given to me by my father when I was a child. I remember I was just as happy as Jake. Now, I had shown it to Jake before, and he really liked it. So I decided to pass it on to him. But I didn't want to give him just that, so I included a soccer ball as well. Is it okay to get two presents? Just take good care of them, okay? Sure. Seeing him like this reminds me he's still very much a child. Then let's do whatever you want today. I'll finish up work quickly and come back, so wait with mom, okay? Dad, make sure you do your work properly. I'll work hard and seriously. After feeding Jake breakfast, I called out to Sarah before heading to work at the clinic next door. Past noon, when I finished work and returned home, I found Jake alone in the living room. Where's your mom? She went out a little while ago. What? She told me to wait here because you would be back soon. I immediately called Sarah on her cell phone. Yes. Sarah responded with her usual irritable tone. Sarah, why aren't you here? I had something come up. I'll be back by tonight. Tonight? Today is Jake's birthday, you know that, right? Didn't we agree to go out together in the afternoon? As I was scolding her over the phone, Jake shook his head vigorously. It seemed like he was saying, it's okay. All right, just make sure you come back tonight. Got it. Okay, bye. Then, she hung up the phone. I was frustrated, but today is Jake's birthday. I decided to focus solely on Jake. Jake, what is your plan today? I want to play soccer, and I want to eat your hamburgers. Is that what you want? When I asked, Jake nodded emphatically. So, Jake and I spent the day doing things he enjoys, like playing soccer and visiting a bookstore. On our way back, we bought lots of food like cake and chicken. When the hamburgers were about to be ready, I checked my phone to contact Sarah and saw a message from her. I'll be home by the end of the day. That's what the message said. Seeing that message somehow made me feel a wave of exhaustion wash over me. Jake, noticing something was off, spoke to me. Dad, are you okay? No problem. The hamburgers are ready, so why don't we eat? We've got cake too. Of course I'll eat. Jake and I celebrated his birthday by eating hamburgers and chicken and talking about school, soccer, and his language lesson. The next morning, I woke up just before noon, feeling exhausted. Oh no, I quickly got dressed and left my room, only to run into Sarah. Sarah, what happened yesterday? Jake was waiting for you the whole time. I came back within the day. You two were just asleep, weren't you? Besides, I'm in a hurry. Sarah rushed off to the bathroom in a flurry. I could only sigh in dismay. And I had a feeling that I was not in the best of health. When I slowly made my way to the living room, Jake was there. Jake, sorry for my waking up late. You must be hungry, right? You could have woken me up. It's okay. I ate some bread. Is that so? Sorry, I felt guilty towards Jake. This had never happened before. I was about to make some coffee, pouring water into the pot to boil when it happened. My vision blurred, and I felt so dizzy I couldn't stand. At that moment, I dropped the mug I was holding, and it shattered loudly on the floor. Dad, are you okay? The moment I heard Jake's voice, I collapsed. Dad, Dad, are you okay? Dad, Jake, sorry, call your mom. Got it. Just as Jake was about to go get Sarah, the living room door opened and Sarah walked in. Jake quickly ran up to her and said, Mom, we need to take him to the hospital. What? What's with the sudden? In response to Jake's desperate plea, even Sarah would surely come to help. I believe this faintly aware in my fading consciousness but Sarah's response was completely unexpected. I have a trip planned, so it's impossible. But Dad, he'll get better soon. 
Besides, I'm going on a trip with my parents for about four days. Take care, okay? Sarah said this to me with a slightly cheerful voice as I lay there. Mom? Jake, I'll bring you a souvenir, so wait here with Dad like good boys. With those words, Sarah left. Can such a thing really happen? Leaving behind her husband who can't move and seven-year-old son. But right now, more important than anything, I need to let someone know. For Jake's sake, I pulled out the cell phone I had tucked into my pants. And at that moment, I'd lost consciousness. A few days later, I woke up in a hospital bed. Dad, Dad. Jake, next to me, startled. Jake, a doctor, and a few of our neighbours were there. As I looked around, unable to grasp what had happened, the doctor explained to me, You collapsed due to anemia, and it seems you were quite exhausted as well. Is that so? Thank you for your help. As I thanked him while lying down, the doctor shook his head and explained the situation. You should thank your son. He used your cell phone to call an ambulance and your neighbours. What? Jake did that all by himself. Yes. Remember, Dad, you taught me the emergency number, right? Right. Thank you, Jake. I patted Jake's head and he looked back at me with strong eyes. I always knew he was reliable, but I hadn't realised just how much he had grown. I felt sorry for the neighbours and Jake, but I was happy to learn about his growth. A few days later, my phone kept ringing, so I was reluctantly about to answer. But after all, Jake answered it. Mom, what's going on? Jake, it's not what's going on, where are you? Where, where's your dad? Ignoring Sarah's frantic tone, Jake uttered some shocking words. Dad has gone far away. What? What do you mean far away? I'm at the restaurant near our house. By restaurant? Oh, wait. Ignoring Sarah's words, Jake hung up the phone. A few minutes later, Sarah hurried into the restaurant and sat down in front of Jake. Jake, and you're here too. Jake said, you'd gone far away, in a gloomy voice. What? You thought something happened to me after I collapsed. What? No, I was just worried. Sarah looked a bit embarrassed and looked down. Because Dad went to the faraway bathroom. Jake explained with an awkward glance. Really? You're so confusing, but more importantly, the house. Why is our house gone? Sarah's panic was not just because she thought I had disappeared, but also because the house we had lived in was gone. Actually, I had been considering remodeling our house for some time. However, after discussing with my hospitalized father, we decided it would be better to demolish it and rebuild entirely, and he agreed, so we proceeded with that plan. I had wanted to discuss this with Sarah for a long time, but she never seemed willing to listen, so I kept it to myself. It's going to be a new house, amazing. You should have mentioned it. I'm totally surprised. Sarah said. Sarah, you are hardly ever home, right? Plus, didn't we discuss rebuilding the house someday when we moved here? I asked. Did we? So when will it be ready? Sarah, looked at me with a happy face. She's always been the type to wear her heart on her sleeve, so it's pretty easy to greet her. I called neighbours who were with me at the hospital, and they came to the restaurant right away to take care of Jake for a bit. Well then, shall we have a serious conversation now? Oh, about the house for three of us. I think it'll be ready within six months. I said, really, but where is all my stuff? Did you store it somewhere? And why not in front of Jake? Sarah questioned. Well, the conversation we're about to have isn't suitable for Jake to hear. I replied. What's with that? You're speaking strangely. Sarah looked at me puzzled. I've left your stuff at your young lover's place. I confessed. What? What are you talking about? There's nobody like that at all. I've checked everything, so lying won't work. Sarah exclaimed. 
Sarah changed her behaviour drastically after we moved, suddenly becoming distant and unexpectedly busy with work, which was unlike her. I always felt something was off. Wondering if she was really busy, I asked my relative who works at the same place as Sarah, only to find out it seems that is not the case. Besides, I never thought Sarah would go on a trip with her parents. She used to say that her parents were quite strict and they hadn't talked much for a long time. Therefore, after I collapsed, I decided to reach out to her parents just once. As expected, they were at home and had no clue about Sarah's whereabouts, prompting me to immediately contact a detective agency to investigate. Just as I suspected, Sarah had another man in her life. It seemed like he was young. This is the evidence of that. How did it come to this without me noticing? I presented the documents and photos submitted as investigation results in front of Sarah. There was no way she could talk her way out of this. Seemingly thinking the same, Sarah deeply apologised. I'm so sorry. I lost my way. I promise I won't do it again. Please forgive me. Okay, we're a married couple, you know. What are you talking about? You guys were together when your husband fell sick, and even on Jake's birthday, right? I pointed out. Let's get divorced, Sarah suggested. A divorce? But didn't you just say we were building a house for the three of us? That includes me, right? I questioned. Indeed, we were in the process of building a house for three of us, but Sarah wasn't included in that plan. When I said three of us, I meant me, Jake, and my dad. I clarified. What? No way. Sarah was shocked. The changing environment was really stressful for me. Yes, it was because of stress. You'll forgive me, won't you? Tara sat beside me and, without caring about the eyes around us, she cozied up with a sweet, pleading voice. While it's true that I changed our environment, there's no excuse for betraying your family. I handed Sarah the divorce affidavit and said, sign here. Now, I'll demand compensation from both of you, and I'll take custody, so I'll be asking for child support too. If you don't agree, I'm prepared to take this to court, whatever it takes. Understanding I was serious, Sarah, with tears streaming down her face, signed a document with shaking hands. Soon after, we officially divorced, and I was able to secure child support. Sarah found it difficult to stay at her job after this incident became known at her workplace, leading to her resignation. With nowhere else to go, she turned to the young man, but he, furious about being sued for compensation because of her, kicked her out along with her belongings. Unable to secure a full-time job, Sarah now juggles part-time jobs, living quietly in an old apartment. I know this because Sarah insisted on giving Jake a birthday present, so I arranged a meeting at a restaurant just a month later. She looked completely different, her hair unkempt, and her frame even thinner. Jake, sorry I'm late. Happy birthday. Sarah said as she handed over the gift, and Jake silently accepted and opened it. Do you like it? You're in elementary school now, so I chose something a bit more mature. Sarah asked in a soft voice. I don't think I'll use it, but I'll keep it. Jake replied loudly. What? Oh, Jake, Dad, let's go home, I said. All right, let's go. Sarah was stunned by Jake's unexpected response. Jake and I left the restaurant, leaving Sarah behind. A husband and wife are originally strangers to each other. When two such people marry and have children living together, there will inevitably be many things that don't go as planned. This made me think that couples and families must help each other to continue. Six months later, our new home was completed. My father was discharged from the hospital and seemed to be in good health. Wow, it's beautiful, Sarah remarked. Yes, I'm glad we decided to build a new house. From now on, it will be just the three of us men living together. There might be challenges, but I believe we can live by supporting each other and working together. I said, All right, I got to keep working hard. Go for it, Dad. Around Jake's neck hung the stethoscope I had given him, a symbol of encouragement. 
I made a firm pledge to myself to continue working with pride and compassion in my medical profession, to be a doctor and a father. Jake can always rely on instilling in him the belief that a career in medicine is noble.